Layers of Fear 2023 is a remake of Layers of Fear 1 and 2, along with some additional content to connect the two stories together and make an overarching narrative. And to do that, the developers introduced the third artistic person in the writer, adding to the painter of Layers of Fear 1 and the actor from Layers of Fear 2. And I recently finished streaming this game, so if you want to see my entire playthrough, you can find it in a playlist just in the description. And I definitely found it to be interesting. I had played Layers of Fear 1 and 2 before, but I was excited to see the story of the writer, which was a tale promising to connect the stories together and sort of explain what was going on. And as somebody who found the story of Layers of Fear 2 difficult to understand, I was excited to see things cleared up a bit. Now, Layers of Fear 1 came out in 2016 and and the sequel came out in 2019, making these not terribly old games. Both are readily available today and run very well on modern systems, being as they are technically modern games. And while this remake does bring some new mechanics to the first game and, and definitely improves the graphic and makes the story of Layers of It 2 a little bit more understandable, I find this game to struggle. And as I kept on playing it, I kept on asking myself what was the plan with this remake, enhancement, expansion thing I'm currently playing? Who is this meant for? You see, the game's biggest issue is the length. And with that, audience retention. The original Layers of Fear averaged around 3 to 4 hours in a playthrough, and Layers of Fear 2 averaged around 5 to 6 hours. This game also has the Inheritance DLC from Layers of Fear 1, which is around an hour in length. And it also adds a new DLC called The Final Note, which is about the painter's wife. Overall, the 2023 game runs around 9 to 12 hours, depending I guess on if you play through the DLC or not, and how fast you move through the story. So, if you look at the math, there is immediately an issue. Out of the 12 hours of gameplay, only two of them are truly brand new stories. Those being the new DLC and the overarching story of the writer, which was definitely the biggest selling point of this game and most notably advertised. And I was really surprised to see how little time the writer actually gets in the story, as I thought she would take up much more time in the story to explain everything that's going on. And I honestly found it to be really disappointing how little time we'd spend with her, because she is an interesting character and the lighthouse is a neat looking area, but we are there overall for like an hour to hour and a half. And the issue is the story of the painter and the story of the actor is still the same story. And when the game was being advertised, it I feel it heavily implied that the story would be a much bigger part of the game, as her tale is meant to tie everything together, and we just spend so little time with her. It did make some upgrades to the original games in this version. Layers of Fear 1 have definitely seen the biggest changes. They have changed many of the sequences, added in some mechanics from the second game, and generally just kind of tidied it up. It's still the same story, and you go through a lot of the same areas, but it definitely, it looks nicer and it feels nice to play. And while Layers of Fear 2 did not get as many changes, I did know that when having chapter changes, what used to be the director talking over a film, now it is actually the writer, which is more easily explains sort of what is the story of the actor, which I found nice because I struggled with understanding the director in the first game. The blooper team are clearly very creative people and they have crafted every environment in this game lovingly and filled it with interesting details. The sounds are a nice mix of pleasant music with disturbing sounds and you're constantly being engaged by the visuals of the game. Something is always happening somewhere around you. The rooms are changing, textures are moving, things are falling. You are constantly moving forward to a new place a new room and a new horror. And as you move through these areas, you find notes and hear random dialogue which tells you the story of what's been going on. 
along with the visual clues here and there. Though sometimes I did find it to be a little bit too abstract for my taste, making it a very challenging form of storytelling, as it can be very hit or miss if your player actually manages to understand what's going on. And here I think my biggest weakness is English not being my first language, which made some more of the flowery dialogue a little bit challenging for me to understand. I, I have a feeling the way the story is told and how the game is played is something you're either gonna really like, or you're absolutely gonna hate it. I don't think there's gonna be much middle ground there. And if you enjoy walking simulators that are these sort of like walking through a haunted house horror, these are really good. They're just long. And that's where we have our biggest issue. You see, with the original layers of fear being about three to four hours, about 30% of players actually finished it. But what becomes an issue is that in the 2023 version, about 30% of players finish the painter's story. And by that point, you are just under halfway through the game. And when looking at the Steam achievements, only 10% of players who own this game have actually finished it. That is a terrible, terrible drop-off. And I think the issue here is this game is simply too long for the type of game it is. While the story definitely interests you at first, it's so long-winded and having to play through the first and second game to kind of get to the writer's story is simply not good. I understand it could be interesting for somebody who has never played those two stories, but even then I feel it's simply too long. I just feel like the game doesn't have what it takes to keep a player engaged for up to 12 hours. And I definitely noticed sort of a fatigue of the game as I kept on playing it. And frustration because I really wanted to get to the writer's story. And realizing that there is so, so little of the writer made me kind of mad in the end. Because when you look over the overarching story of the game, you start as the writer for about 20 minutes. Then you play through all of Layers of Fear 1, which is about three to four hours, with a minor stop for the writer to walk a little bit around the lighthouse. And then you finish the first game, you get another 10 to 20 minutes with the writer before going either into the DLC or Layers of Fear 2. You play through the entirety of Layers of Fear 2 with a little stop with the writer, again maybe 10-ish minutes. And then as you finish Layers of Fear 2, and I was positive this was the time where we would truly dive into the writer's story, you get a cinematic and the game ends. And that made me a little bit mad to be honest, because the writer is the character I was most interested in. The writer is the character I bought this game for, and I played this game for, because I wanted to know the overarching story. And the overarching story is definitely interesting with the whole Rat Lady stuff and such. It's, it's definitely interesting, but it's just too long, and I feel it's kind of a waste. Now I spent some time thinking about it, and here's what I think they should have done. They should have focused the story more on the writer. I think good 50% of the game should have been just the writer's story. It doesn't have to be contained just to the lighthouse, or make the lighthouse bigger, or something. I wanted to get to know the son of the woman a little bit more, I wanted to understand her a little bit more. I feel like the writer was just kind of tacked on to fix story issues. And when it comes to the first and the second game, I don't think they should be like fully replayed in this game. With the first and second game both looking good today, working well today, there's nothing really that requires a remake. I mean, they're both sold on Steam where I bought this third game. I think instead we should have had shorter chapters exploring the painter and the actor from a slightly different time or angle or simply have a sort of a refresh of what their stories were but not an entire history playthrough of their games, because their games are long enough on their own. Layers of Fear 1 is an excellent length for a walking simulator. 
like it's a good length, it is interesting, it works well. 30% of players finish it, and that's nice. I feel like Age of Fear 2 needed a little bit more help with the narrative, but that one is about 4 to 5 hours, which is also a fine time. But adding both of these games, along with adding like a tiny bit of a story about the writer, is just not good. And I don't quite understand who this game is meant to be for. The feeling was it was meant for those who were actually long-time fans of the series, as it was supposed to tie up the entire story. But if you go into it as a long-time fan of the series, you are just replaying the games you already have. And I'm not sure that is very satisfying. I did not find it very satisfying, at least. And if it's for new players, well, it's too long. Even though they're constantly going through something that's new, it's still too long. This type of gameplay and storytelling is simply too abstract to keep somebody engaged for that long of a time. Which is a shame, because I think the blooper team is massively creative and they definitely have an interesting story they are telling there. But they need what I think every artist needs, which is somebody to sit down with them, look at what they've produced and want to show, and help them edit it down to something that is going to be more easily understood and enjoyed. And I know we want to have like, yes, but everybody wants to see like everything and and there are people who enjoy the extended version of, of movies and, and I get that. But this is also a video game meant for the mass market. And if you make a game that has you lose two thirds of your player base before you meet the halfway mark, that's not good. And if you have only 10% of players finishing your story, that's really not good. And that tells me that somewhere along the way these people got bored and lost interest. And I don't think it's because the story is bad or because the visuals are bad or because the gameplay is bad or the performance is bad because all of these things are good. Sound is great, visuals are great, Gameplay is really nice for a walking simulator, like it, it works, it's interesting going around all these areas and seeing everything change. It is an excellent game, but it's too long, and I think that length is what really ruined it. And I think Blooper Team is aware of it, as they have also said that this Layers of Fear is sort of the end of what they internally call themselves as Blooper Team 2.0. They're ending the era of making these psychological horror games, and instead they're going for the Blooper Team 3.0, which is making the mass market horror. And I think there's also a mistake. It's the psychological horror is something they're good at. I simply need to edit better. Currently, they are working on the remake of Silent Hill 2, and I think Blooper Team are a great choice when it comes to the visuals of the game. They are really good at making horrifying visuals, and I look forward to seeing what Silent Hill 2 is going to look like from them, and I'm hoping they're really going to become successful. Blooper Team has come out and said they focused more on the moods of games. They focused on the quality of graphics, they focused on the music, and on the story, but they never put a lot of attention to the gameplay mechanics. And I think now, as they're entering into this new era, Hopefully, they're gonna focus more on the gameplay mechanics because I think what is needed for them to be able to tell these stories they want to tell is better gameplay. Because better gameplay is gonna keep people playing. Because you don't want people to end up with games that feel like they could have watched the movie. So that's what I'm left after playing this game. I'm disappointed. I love the visuals, I love the vibe, I, I love the music. The story interests me, but I feel like we got too bogged up in remaking everything when in fact they should have tried to make a third game simply focused on closing off the story. But that's just my opinion. Tell me, what do you think about the new Layers of Fear? Have you played it and did you enjoy it? And are you excited to see what Looper Team does in the future? Do you think they're gonna do a good job with Silent Hill 2 or, or are you worried they're gonna miss the mark? I will definitely be streaming the remake of Silent Hill 2, so if you wanna make sure to be notified when that happens, subscribe! I'm trying to get up to 200 subscribers, that would make me really happy. So please comment 
like, subscribe, you know all the good YouTube stuff to appease our eldritch algorithmic overlords. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day.